I'm Stefan Bauman. I would like to invite you on a special journey to discover the splendor, encounter the grandeur, feel the excitement. Come along with me as we experience the thrill of painting outdoors. A three-day journey that will change your art forever. In one of America's most stunning locations, Mount Shasta. Everything you need to know is on our website, www.stephenbauman.com. I have been painting for years and years and years, and there are a lot of boxes out there for us to paint. So you have Prashad boxes galore. You can have one box that, that you can put your paints in, and this thing here is, is a system. And then you have little Prashad boxes and handles, and uh, you have all kinds of backpacks that are available. And but as I was painting throughout the years, I always hate the backpack. Joe was saying too, he said, every time I put my backpack over, it falls down. And it's like, it's a pain in the ass. So you go, you, you put your pack down, the first thing it goes, <laughs> crashes down. And then, you know, you're always reaching into the thing. And the thing that you always want is down at the bottom. And then you have your brushes, and if you don't store your brushes right, they get bent. And then you have uh, your jar of turpentine that you have attached to your backpack and you put it into your trunk, yes. thinking that's going to stand up straight, uh -huh. and you get to your destination, and that's falling over. Now, so there's always something. And then tripod, because a tripod never fits. I mean, so, so it's always been like, oh, God, I came across this pack. And for the first time in my life, I said, oh, sweet Jesus, somebody is thinking about the artist. But this is not an artist pack doesn't matter, but the thing is, the only thing I ever thought that actually works really well. The good thing about this is that when you set it down, this is on a, on a corner, but when you set this thing down, it stays down because it has a hard plastic bottom. Now, I'm in the process of actually finding out where these are made, and we're going to custom this for artists. Right now, it's just made by Milwaukee. Right. Okay, so it's a regular tool pack. What we have done here is that this, I saw this and I was like, sweet mystery of life, I found you. <laughs> so where do I start? So the first thing I did was, you know, it's a backpack. Did and you get is, it in the tool section? In the tool section, of the yeah. store? Yeah, but it's a Milwaukee. A lot of the companies have this, but this is a Milwaukee one. Which kind of store? Oh, Any Park store that Park. handles Milwaukee. And even then they don't. But you can buy them on Amazon. Sure. And they run $140, which Ace mm -hmm. Hardware Store. Ace. So, but they, not all of them have this because it's kind of a high-end specialty item. So they do have them on Amazon. It will eventually put it out. I call it the Grandview bag. And we'll have a lot of these things fixed in from China. But anyway, so when I was when I was in Florence, I wore this thing, and I carry everything for my students. And so this thing is pretty heavy now. And it's a pretty heavy pack pack when it's empty, because it's not designed to go over the Sierras. But the thing is, it's sturdy and it sits upright. I had this thing on carrying it throughout Florence, and I never, as heavy as it was, I never knew it was on my back. It is really well designed for carrying and weight distribution. So 
They have lots of padding in here, and it's just really great. This probably is as important as your Prashad box. Because you can have the best Prashad box, but if you're battling some of the backpacks that you have or things, I mean, like, even like you've got the roller thing, you've got the, 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 the everything, right? So anyway, so the new boxes pretty much work on, on um, tripods. And this particular tripod is um, sold by Strata. This is Strata. This is the best tripod on the market. Carbon. It's carbon. It's very, very light for what it is. And you can see it folds kind of backwards. It's one of the smallest. Now, it's one of the great things about this is that it does fit into your backpack. I don't get any money for this. This is just for you guys to see awesome stuff. So anyway, so this one unfolds and is absolutely fabulous. Are and the great like, thing, huh? Are the legs telescoping also? Yeah, they'll no, telescope okay. and they'll give you, they're very good. But the thing is it folds out and it's super light. And this thing fits beautifully in here. And what I did was um, I had it modified with Velcro here. Mm -hmm. So this thing sits beautifully in here, like this, and the Velcro straps are here, and all through Florence, I never even lost it, or, you know, it was absolutely perfect. Then on this side, we have our little turp container. This is kind of the, yeah, the Holbein turp containers are horrible, because the little, the little gasket that's inside of these is supposed to keep them, yeah, comes apart and these get really rubbery. So the whole mine suck. The cheaper China ones are actually better. Um, they don't have that problem with the rubber. But I've always had problems with these because they spill. So this is perfect in here. And then I modified this a little bit with a string. There. And just in case you're walking around Florence or Venice, you can kind of tie that down a little bit. So there's just no accident. But the thing is, this thing won't fall over in your car either. It's so sturdy. When you put this thing down, it stays down. So what's the total weight of it when it's all packed? I have no idea. You're, but it's not horrible. Guy. I can tell you that it's half the amount of weight that she had. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind her. Oh my god. I mean I carried that. I have no idea. Did you think did you see how heavy that thing was when you carried it down for? Well, whenever I was going around certain corners, I just picked the whole thing up and went around the corner. Oh my god, I was exhausted. <laughs> On it too, I know it was just crazy. I mean, that's a, that will stop you from from playing or painting right now. <laughs> so anyway, so so then it has these wonderful. Now you know I know women in their bags. You can't have too many compartments. Mm -hmm. So this one has full of compartments. <laughs> so I had this compartment. I said, oh, that's kind of handy. And, and when I was in Florence, I put my maps in there. But this is a great place where I put my Holbein knives. Now, if you've never used Holbein palette knives, they're special. They're wonderful. They run you about fifty to sixty dollars a piece, and they are like precision. I mean, you can just hear how wonderfully soft, and they just like they're like butter. You can cut right. yourself on. You can cut yourself on. They are so finely, and you're allowed to touch these. You can come up here during the, the workshop, and you're allowed to touch these. You don't go, oh my god, but you can just hear. Yeah, you, know, you don't get that with the cheap ones, and these things are. They're like brushes, and you can just push them and pull them. That's what you need because you like doing the powder knife paint. It's not just like putting um, stucco on a on a wall. It's like you know these really manipulate beautiful. But the problems with these is that they are so sensitive that if they if they store just a little one way or the other, or you drop them, they're ruined. So I modified these things. Come when you buy them, you get this little black velvet uh, container that has one of these strips inside of it. And you know that these are expensive if they come in black velvet. Mm. <laughs> Anything that comes in black velvet is expensive except cheap Mexican paints. Those are still cheap. But anyway, so, so I, took, I took the little boxes and I glued them into my little pencil box that you buy at the art store. And these are really nice holders. And so now, and I do like to travel with my knives. I do use them at times. But you can see I take great care of these. Because this right here, this this is a hundred dollars worth of knives, just with these two. Can you check that on the airline, or how do you? Well, can they you don't care about that. They don't care about the knives. Yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about that when I open it up. But this whole thing got checked in the, in you know my luggage. Okay. Just so, checked it. It wasn't yeah. carry on. Yeah, it wasn't carry on. Was no, 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 no. But anyway, 
So one of the one of the keys and about carrying on and doing all of that is when you're traveling to Europe, best thing to do is take your paints out and put them in a plastic bag and just lay them right in front. So if they're going to open up here, you always check them in. And if you're going to uh, worry about them going through them, if they lay them just on front, you're going to have some people that are kind of happy. They've seen enough of those to know that they're just oil paints that are fine. But if you've got this thing sitting here like that, and first thing, you're not allowed to take any turpentines and stuff, obviously. But if you see this thing sitting here like that, they'll confiscate it because they don't know what's in it. And they're not going to sit there and open it up there at the airport. So what you do here is that you take this lid off and you tie it back on and you leave it open. If they can look into it, they're not going to bother you. So if you decided to go to Europe and you wanted to bring in, you'll see when I open this up, those MS, um, M MSR cans which I have one in here, a small one, you just take the lid off and put it elsewhere so that if somebody looks at it, it's open. It's open. If it's closed, they'll just take it. Okay. So anyway, so then you've got your little handy dandy compartment here, and this is where I keep, a, everybody should have a bungee cord, and there's a nightlight. Okay, so you need that. And then one thing that you should always have with you when you paint, late cream. What? For leg cramps? Oh, leg cramps. Remember we talked about that? What were those called? Yeah, can you pass those around? Leg cramp pills. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you buy them? Walgreens. What are they? What are they? I can get them at Walgreens. He wants you to push drugs. That's they work. <laughs> they really work. They work. You just what, put what? one under your tongue. What do you and I used one last night. They but take care of leg cramps. I know. What are the yeah. ingredients? They're all natural. All I don't know natural. what it is in there, but they it's work actually fantastic. fairly quickly, too. Okay. You can even buy them that they have sleeping pills in them, too, because yeah. usually at night you get like cramps. But what works also really well is pick up pickle juice. So, anyway, pickle juice. so now, now we get to go to the good stuff. Here. So anyway, so we open this up, and the fabulous thing about this bag is that this whole front opens up and exposes the belly. Okay. And so in here, we have our paper towels, how nice, and then I have my Strata box. Now this is not a advertisement for Strata, but Strata makes a pretty hefty box. It's kind of a little heavy, it's made out of metal for painting. So this is my, my easel. Oh, you use See, so you're walking around with a French easel and I've got this. Okay, so, okay. Okay. Perfect. So, and that the whole thing sits beautiful. Is that expensive beautiful. for Strata? Everything's expensive. It's is there a cheap version? Is, mm -mm. Oh, there's lots of different kinds of versions. But, but this is, it's called the Frenchie. What is that? A Strata easel? Is that what they're yeah, This is an easel. It attaches <laughs> to a <laughs> tripod. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, like I said, I don't get paid by these people at all. Um, and, you know, this bag is 150 This will cost you $150, $200. The, the, the tripod will cost you that. But, you know, if you buy good stuff, you never have to buy it again. Yep. You know, my father used to go and buy a blender at a garage sale. And then he'll go, oh, I can get it fixed. I paid a dollar for it. And he'll spend $60 fixing it. And you could buy one at Walmart for 30 You know, so it's crazy. But anyway, so anyway, so this sits in here really beautifully. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for those strata boxes, can you get really any tripod? Or They'll fit on any photo okay. tripod. Because I'd rather not get another tripod. I'd rather like use my current one. Because it's also good. You just need the mount thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you just need to get the mount. Yeah. All right. The beautiful thing about the Strata is that it, uh, uh, this particular tripod has the ball up on top. But your tripod's kind of a little heavy. So what we're trying to do is get you so that you can go backpacking and hiking in, in Florence next year. So you want your hands free because when you're in downtown Florence painting and you're looking for things, you want to be able to buy stuff for yourself. And you want to be able to get to your wallet. <laughs> yeah, and if you've got your hand with a with a tripod, you can't buy anything. So anyway, so gotta be careful. So anyway, so when we open this up, this is the compartment that holds all of the paint. And so when it's closed, you can actually see the colors and stuff that you have. That's really kind of cool and handy. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you keep the paint. This is you just keep keep odds and ends. I don't know what that's for. But anyway, so when we get back here, if you notice, this here is like there's all of your brushes. 
Now, I can't admit, you know, when I was painting out there, I had this thing sitting on the ground, and I go, oh, I need a small brush, and all I had to do was just go over and pick it up. I didn't have it in a separate box or a separate tube. Or plastic bag. Um, or a plastic <laughs> bag. It wasn't rolling. I didn't have to go digging into my bag. Yes. Is that a rigid shell on the... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's rigid. So that's what keeps it standing up. And that's what keeps all this flat. So these have already been to Europe and back again. And you can see they haven't been uh, tweaked or, or, or folded or molded or anything like that. Um, of course, the, the brushes that I always recommend that I love more than anything are the Escadas. Escadas are really expensive. So a brush like this from Escada is like $60. But you get what you pay for. They're your swords. When you go to battle with your painting, you've got to have good swords. Can you pass it around? I'm hoping that the Grandview will be having their own one. And of course it will be black and silver and really cool. We'll have all kinds of cool stuff in it. Yes, it's all about toys. So anyway, so you have your brushes, they stand up, they're there, you bend down, you pick them up. Fabulous. Okay, then I have my jar. These, these are a must for anybody who paints on a location. They're the jars that you put your turpentine in. Um, these don't leak, they're made for white gas. And they are, they are the only way to go. Anything else will leak or, or drip or something like that. These are fabulous or aluminum. If you're going to travel, though, keep it open. You don't want to have any liquids. It has to be empty, right? It has to be empty. So where yeah. do you, how do you ship your medium? Your, uh, you just go almost everywhere that you would go, you there. there's a Home Depot. So you buy it there, even in Florence. Yeah, even in Florence. Even in Florence, we went to a hardware store and bought turpentine for everybody. Oh, okay. And hardware turpentine is fabulous. It stinks. <laughs> but man, it gets your brushes so squeaky clean when you go. Okay, so. And what's that called? So you have to buy the MSR jars. And you buy these, at, you buy these also. This is at Amazon. Amazon. So everything. Uh, Amazon has these. So anyway, so this is, sits in here. And look at how beautiful. It just, it's like it's custom made. Okay, and then every artist thing has to have a bug repellent. That's a must. So if you're you're getting together with your stuff, um, over here I've got my um, paint scraper, which we should have, and then um, of course I don't always use it, but I have it. But if you know, if you watch my videos, you know what this is. It's one of the watched, most watched video that I have. On my, on my YouTube video. I can't imagine. It. I get people watching this video by the hundreds every day. I don't know why, but, but so that's a prospect. And so that's in here. That's nicely protected. That went to Europe and back again, and it didn't get damaged. And then here I have two book lights for nighttime painting. So I told you I had this loaded for skills. Okay. So I have that in here. I have my bug spray in here, and then you want your bug spray and you want suntan lotion or sunblock. This is again something that you, you needed. And then over here, I've got not one, but two color checkers. Now I carry these around for you guys. Okay, these are Carter's color checkers. Um, that's why I, was, I, don't, I don't know if he knows me, but he knows that I push his color checkers. But these are absolutely awesome. They run you about 80 bucks. What is a color checker? Color checker is something that, as a beginning planer painter, I'm glad you asked that. It's like, there are ways of getting around it, but these are really great. Um, is that you look out there and you look at the color of the mountain, and if we're going to be painting this afternoon, say, hey, could I borrow that color checker? And I'll go, yeah, of course, let me go get one. That's why I have them in here. But what you do is you, you look at the value and the color of a mountain, and you go, what is that? So you mix a guess and you put it on here and you hold it up, close one eye, and you look through this hole. And this hole isol is isolated, it has a black uh, curve around it, and you can put half of this color up against the object that you're looking at, and you could check the color. We used to just hold the brush up against it. Yeah, but see, you did that today, and you still had the wrong color. Remember, oh, I said you had a guess. So if you had a color checker, you would have had better luck. Now, Carter's students are really exact, exact, right, Paul? Yeah. They're like, exactly. So, so these are really good, especially for beginning students. Um, like I say, I carry that around. And then another important element I keep in here 
is a mirror. Now the reason why I carry a mirror is because, you know, like today I was on the trail, and some people have recognized me, so it's like, you know, so I'm getting a mirror before I paint. You have to get the paint off your nose. When you're on YouTube, you got to look good all the time, but anyway. So, so what you do is you look at your painting backwards, like this. And it oftentimes will show things that are not popping out or thing. Right. Remember yesterday we were talking about using the phone mm -hmm. and using the phone and looking at the phone and looking at your object like this. You kind of see it backwards. Same thing. The mirror does the same thing. A lot of plain air painters have these. So anyway, so that's in here. Then I also have these rubber sticks, and these rubber sticks have little points to them. Also, what works really well are like pink pearl erasers. So those are really good. They're for wiping off paint and making branches and things. Mm -hmm. They're just for little tricks. Those are paint shapers? Yes. Hmm? They're, they're shapers? actually called wipeout tools, but you get them in the... They're also uh, called shapers. Yeah, you, get, you can get them in the sculpture section of the art store. And I think now they're making them for artists, just because we bought so many of them. Do you no. just like move the tip on the on the canvas, or do you it put paint it. onto it and then? It's like the squeegee, like a little squeegee. Yeah. Yeah. It lifts the paint um, off. It lifts. If you want to try it, I have this stuff here. Um, so anyway, so you can wipe off. You know, a lot of times you can scrape. Uh, this is great if you're doing like aspen trees, and you're out there and you want to get the trees in without having to paint them all. You can kind of just scrape, and they're squared off. Mm. And you can kind of scrape an aspen tree off. So anyway, I got a couple of those if you guys want to borrow them. And then, what's always good too, it's a painting tool, are these, which are the doctor Q-tips. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have these. And they come in handy for other things too. That, so I've got some of those. So anyway, and then there's another pocket up here that you can put stuff. So there are ample pockets and everything. And when this all comes together and closes down, like this, Everything is kind of neat in a cool little package. But wait, <laughs> there's more. But wait, there's more. So, there's another big compartment back here. That's what I wanted to see. Hold your laptop. See, impatient girls office. Don't give dessert. me that, just open it. But you have dessert. <laughs> this is your dessert. Oh. The great thing, th this thing is made. Not for artists. This thing's made for made contractors. For contractor, yeah. Oh. So it's a tool bag. Yeah, it's well built. So I can see that. It's exactly. so well built I can't get into it. Okay. So that was actually a review I saw on one of the backpacks was the zipper was not the best. No, this is not the zipper. The zipper is fine. The thing is I have my Raymar box back. Oh, it's locked. There, see, yeah. so it's just a tiny bit oh, over. So that's where you carry your, your um, wet small canvases. Wet this is where you put your, your so wet canvases in. So there's your, so like you didn't know that this part of the studio was in there. Is that and this, when you open it up, you have your, your I have a wet, wet canvas holder here. Now, is, that, is that an 11 by 14? 12 by 14. Uh, 11 by 14. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to modify this because if I'm using this, I don't need this. So I'm going to take the lid and everything off. So this will sit a little bit deeper in. And then I can just slide my panels inside of this and I don't have to mm -hmm. open this up. Um, which will give me a little bit more room to get this, the, the zippers around. Um, and then there's more, well, wait, there's more stuff in here. <laughs> so anyway, so that goes back into that holder. That's where my canvases go. One, my biggest drawback is that if you're going to go paint outdoors, my suggestion is to paint in 12 by 16. And the reason why I suggest 12 by 16 is because 12 by 16s, you actually make enough money on them. A lot of people paint like little 8 by 10s, like Paul's working on 8 by 10, and he puts a lot of work into it. And if you like using what we suggest is $2 a square inch, it takes them just as much time to do a large painting as it does a small painting. And well, now it will, because he's going to use larger brushes. Um, and but the thing is, there's a break that if you do little tiny paintings, you'll never get enough money for them to do all the work. So it's better to use larger. So this that's the only drawback I have. And it's 11 by 14 boxes. I'd like it a little bit bigger, but you know, for this bag, I'll sacrifice. Okay. What size did you say was optimum? 
This is 11 by 14. Right. What size did you say? 12 by 16. 12 by 16. Yeah. And then this is a must-have. These you buy at Art Essentials. And these are little tiny trash cans that actually hang, you can see, uh, on your tripod underneath. And, you know, trash cans are the horrible thing that blows in the wind and all this stuff. And the thing is, they're, they're just kind of always a pain in the butt. But this thing folds up really nice. Put this in. You call up Peggy and you go, Peggy, Stefan had those trash cans. Give me a good price on them. Peggy's awesome. She's at Art Essentials. Okay. Then, of course, every good plain air painter that takes classes with the Grandview has to have their marketing cards. <laughs> right, Paul? Sure. And so these are, these are, when people go, do you have a business card? And I go, oh, yeah, I do. Here. <laughs> and they go, oh. And I go, yeah, isn't that great? And they're like, wow. And then I, I turn to this market. And I go, you know, a lot of people collect those. <laughs> do you want me to sign it? Oh. <laughs> and they'll always say, yeah, sure. Now the problem is, is that they have a signature. And you know how people are with signatures? It's like, oh my God, this is famous. So they're walking around the, the rest of their trip, if I'm in Yellowstone, worrying about, oh my God, where am I going to put this thing? It must be valuable. Some artist signed it. You know, so... Um, so these are very important. If you don't have marketing cards in your bag, you're in trouble. At yeah, least if you're a my workshop. Card. Yeah. Because nobody wants a business card. Well, they they can't read them. them. No, they, they can't, can't read them. them. I've handed some them. out, and usually people are well, a little older. Can I have older. a marketing card? And then they can't read. Would you like a marketing card? I would like one of the yours. Would you, would you like it? I want you to sign it. I will. I'll sign it. So, um, oh. Oh, wow. Paul watches my videos and stuff, and we're working with marketing. <gasps> if you don't do... It's my birthday. Is it? <laughs> See where I was on your birthday? <laughs> so, so um, getting back, to, to, since we've kind of strayed onto marketing here, um, Paul watches my videos. And so Paul came in, the first thing he says, I've got my marketing cards. Now, he listens to my videos because he knows... Now, watch what happens. He knows that um, when you're dealing with somebody, you hand them you know, a card. But then what you do is you go, you hand them a card. And this is one of his cards, one of his paintings. Nice. And then you go, oh, here, you might want this one also. Mm -hmm. right? And then you go, oh, well, you know, I've got, I've got five of them. Yeah. Are they five or six? Five. Five of them. So I've got five of them, right? I'll just take them all. Is that New York? Okay. <laughs> And then you go, and then you go, would you like me to sign them? So you have, a, you have to have a little Sharpie. And of course, these ones are, the other ones I do with the big Bauman on them. But this is how you kind of want them, because now all of a sudden, these are like little frameable originals. Okay. And so what he'll do is actually go through and sign every one of these for them. What he's doing, he's getting a client. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. So at that point, it's like now they have five. Now what happens is that that person goes down to have dinner with, you know, down at the lodge, and they happen to bump into Shirley and Jane, who happen to be at the lodge also the same weekend there, there are, and they say, did you see the artist up there painting? And they go, no, he must have gone somewhere, right? And they go, well, oh man, his paintings are so awesome. Here, look at some of his paintings, and they're going to look at it and go, here, why don't you keep one of the cards? And he signed them too, because they're valuable. So, so if somebody walks around with five cards, and all of a sudden, they're apt to run into somebody. You know, they, they would say, oh, well, I've got five of them. Here, do you take one? Can you see how that spreads? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's marketing. I hate marketing, but go ahead. But that's a good way to do it. That's a good way to do it. See, there's, we're going to start getting you back into marketing when you start doing your coaching. But this is kind of the stuff that we end up doing with in our, in our classes. But I digress. If you want a set of cards that are signed, go see Paula. I highly recommend it, and maybe you'll get an original painting something like that. So anyway, so that's, this is the whole path. If you'd like to try coaching for yourself, whether you're a beginner or an advanced painter, please don't hesitate to give me a call at 415-606-9074.
Join us on our website at www.thegrandview.org and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting.